scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Yes, finally, I've moved house and I'm in my new home. And now I can settle down to a wonderful, charming, fluffy summer filled with Big Finish audios of Survivors. Yes, this time I'll be talking about the Survivors Series 2. Now, as you remember from last year, my review of Survivors Series 1 was perhaps one of the most single glowing things I've ever done. I did do a, a daily listen. But this time, as it's just come out and I don't want to give away any spoilers, I'll do one general overview review. Yes, it's not Doctor Who and yes, it's not Blake 7, but it is by Terry Nation and it is from the 70s and it is based on a BBC product. So I think you're more likely to forgive me for reviewing this than you are for some of the other things I've covered. Now at the moment, episode one of series one is available for free on the Big Finish website. So if you like the sound of the survivors after listening to this trailer, pop over to the Tin Dog and follow the link in order to get to the free, that's completely free, episode of Survivors. It's the introductory story. It's very, very dark and not particularly recommended for children. That's the warning. However, I also have to wrap that warning up in the fact that, well, Survivors is just brilliant. It's one of the best bits of audio drama. It's not the sort of thing you hear. It's a zombie film without the zombies. It's the end of the world as we know it, and no one feels fine. Yes, the world ended in the 70s in The Survivors. And you know what? It's a slightly alternative universe in the sense that that's what happened there and it's not what happened here. There was a brand new spin-off version of The Survivors made a few years ago. It only made it a few episodes in and was cancelled. But this is set firmly in that television universe. The wonderful thing is, once society's fallen, it doesn't really matter which decade it's set in. Almost. We'll get back to that particular point in a moment. So, Series 2. It's four stories long. It's a boxed set. At the moment, the CD costs £25, and the download only costs you 20 There was an advanced order discount, and if you manage to get that, well, good for you. The four stories in question are... Number one, Dark Rain, Ken Bentley. Number two, Mother's Courage, by Louise Jameson. Again, we'll come back to that one in a moment. The Hunted, Ken Bentley. And finally, summing up this whole four-part story, The Savages by Matt Fitton. Now, some people out there have said it's not as strong as Series 1. Series 1 hit you like a juggernaut. It couldn't possibly do that, because you're already familiar with the characters. You're already familiar with the game plan of the survivors. Not everyone will make it out in one piece. In fact, most people won't make it out in one piece. Big Finish have created some characters, and there are some characters which existed in the TV series which exist here. Now, I've not seen the TV series, so when people talk about certain people not being in other seasons, well... I'm going to ignore that, because I don't know the mechanics and I don't know the background. I'm just experiencing the big finish end of things, and I think that's better. Yes, everyone adores the series 1 and 2 and 3. Well, perhaps not the later ones where it became basically some sort of drama with a farming subplot. And that's fine, because that's what you'd have to do. That's the reality of having to survive. You have to get things out of the ground, you have to get animals, you have to return to farming and agriculture and metalwork, otherwise you end up back in the Stone Age within a fortnight. Perhaps the people of the 70s were slightly better prepared than we are now, with our reliance on technology to such a massive extent. Even when I was growing up, most people that I knew could repair their own cars to a certain extent. They could do something. But now everything just plugs into a diagnostic machine in order to keep, well, dealerships going. We're much more of a disposable society these days. But that's more of a commentary on now than in the 70s. So what have we got? Story 1, The Dark Rain. Months after the plague, storms batter the country. As Abby resumes her search for her son, Jackie and Daniel fight for their lives. 
You see, that's the sort of ambiguous, something's going on, just listen to it, I won't give you any spoilers, description that we sometimes get with Big Finish, because, well, frankly, nobody wants to spoil any spoilers, and I for one am on board with that. Your basic plot consists of a very small, atmospheric, tiny storyline, and that's one of the themes for this whole series. It's very small, it's very insular, it's a lot more insular and a lot less broad strokes than series one. It's more of a character piece, which means that the atmosphere and all of the acting is allowed to be brought straight to the fore, and that's pretty damn good. You've got Louise Jameson's character, who's so good in this is that you forget she wasn't in the original run. And of course, Daniel, and more about Daniel in a moment. Narratively speaking, you've got one storyline which splits in two, making episodes two and three happen simultaneously, and then everyone coming back together again for story four. This makes time pass quicker and slower, if you see what I mean, as well as providing more of an arc, a monster of the week, almost, in order to deal with it. Now, let's face it, the Survivor's World has not been invaded by aliens. It is, to all intents and purposes, merely our society, just with the lights off and considerably less people. Oh, and no one in charge. The first story has people trapped. It has people fighting for survival, and it has the beginnings of searches for distant, lost characters. And I, for one, don't know if these lost characters ever turn up. Because, well, like I said, I've not seen the TV series. This series, this audio series, has to fit in perfectly with the TV series, and I know it will do. But of course that doesn't stop narratives from wandering off on their own tangents, and still having to feel like they happened in the 70s. Story 2 is the one that's created the most chat on any forums, because Story 2 was written by Louise Jameson. Now, Louise wrote what was generally taken as not the most well accepted of Tom Baker's run in the last series of audios. There was a lot of wailing and gnashing, and the sound design, well, it was intriguing and made some fantastically interesting choices. It was a marmite of a story. Whether you liked it or loathed it, that's your own personal choice. Here we have something written exclusively by Louise. Yes, she's had some help from Big Finish, but no more than any other writer would have had from Big Finish. Here we have a woman who has things to say. Things to say about the place of women in society. Things to say about their needs, their wants, and their motivations. And here we have a story that fits that perfectly. We have a definite gender split. We have a completely female cast in the second story and a completely male cast in the third story. Again, I'll come back to that one in a moment. Yes, the men have gone off to hunt the thing that was in episode one but they've also left the women to themselves, to find an all-female camp. Yes, there were the Greenham Common women and things like that, which is definitely taken as some sort of template here. Admittedly, they existed after this narratively, or in reality, but as the reality of the narrative has been written now, as opposed to then, you get that as a template. It doesn't matter. Basically, you've got an all-female world. And yes... There is one extremely logical point to why that couldn't succeed in a post-apocalyptic world. But however, as a community who only took men for, well, say, when they needed them, then that could have worked. But that's never truly dealt with. It's the mechanics of how it works that make it fit. There are some particularly well-spoken and well-understood lines. You could imagine this taking place on stage. You can imagine this actually being filmed. The soundscape for every single one of these stories is exemplary, just like series one. Which brings me rather nicely to story number three. Again, I want to talk about so much more, but I would just be giving too many spoilers away. Series 3 consists of the men heading out to find the thing that was in story 1 and also to locate someone who's a survivalist, someone who has survived but is also knows about what's going on and how to track big animals. The scenery, the countryside is depicted marvellously. You can actually feel the green fields and the overrun 
and the cracked roads and the rain and the darkness and the impending night. Because that's what we've got coming on here. There are nothing but broken and flawed people in this whole narrative. And that's what makes drama interesting. It's difficult to write about perfect people, but it's very good to write about broken ones. And every single person present has something going on. There is something or someone out there, and all of the male characters, well, they've got to change and adapt and evolve themselves personally, as well as physically, in order to survive. Now, that brings us to Daniel. Daniel, as was hinted at in the first story, is gay. And there is the possibility of a relationship blooming here. Now, if you are watching this on TV, you'd just go, that's probably doomed, because that's the sort of thing that happened. It is... It was very subtle in the first series, and in this series, indeed, it's mainly there if you choose to see it, but you can see it. It's a lot more obvious. And if the whole purpose of the human race is to procreate and survive and go on, then this puts him in a rather interesting situation, but not an insurmountable one. So that, as a subplot, as something worth going into, has a 70s morality feel to it without becoming something more, let's say, torchwoody. It's been written as a 70s piece, but it has echoes of everything. Let's face it, homosexuality had only been legal for, what, seven years? And of course, now that society's fallen, the only law of the land is do as you please. Thank you, Mr Crowley. So yeah, as a subplot, deeply interesting. But it mustn't detract from the actual narrative. It's an adventure story and it's on audio. You've got some fantastic performances going on here and they do balance out perfectly with the female cast. There are things, very, very dark things going on that really do need to be dealt with. So yeah, story three, just as strong. But everything comes to a head in story four. That contains everyone from the original stories brought together for one massive dark festival. These stories are enormously powerful, and to talk at all about Story 4, The Savages, well, that's just going to give away too many spoilers. So yes, not quite as powerful as Series 1, but nothing can match the end of absolutely everything. I was surprised that the Lita Alexandra, whatever she was called in the first series, didn't come back, but I'm sure she'll come back in November for Series 3. Survivors goes from strength to strength and is almost longer in its run than the original TV series. So yeah, they might get the power back on one day, but until then, it's very, very dark everywhere. So go away, download episode one from series one for free, as I said, and then come back and listen to this series too. So until next time, where I'll talk about Doctor Who, be seeing you. Life used to be about making easy choices, didn't it? What do I have for tea? No. Not anymore. Now we have to make hard choices to survive. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions. Survivors. Series 2 box set. Jenna, I have to do this. It's always been about finding Peter. You know that. I, I know, I know. Everyone left behind. We've all had friends, loved ones, die. We've all been through the same thing. Survival of the fittest. That's what it used to be about. And so it is again. Civilization needs rules so we can all survive. Pete! You don't know what's out here. Daniel's out here. Daniel! What the hell is that? What's that noise? Start the engine. What? Just start the engine now. Greg may not have much time. No. We're not done with this. No way. It makes no sense for the last people on Earth to kill one another. No. Put it down. You can't. You can't. Don't be an idiot. You want to get yourself shot? What are they doing to him? Big finish. We love stories. You did it. You actually did it.
You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Available on RSS, iTunes, Stitcher, Audio Boom, and Tumblr. Doctor Who and its associated works are copyright of the BBC. No infringement is intended. You can contact the show, donate, buy merchandise, or find out more about my other projects by visiting the Tin Dog Podcast homepage and clicking on the links. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. Mm-hmm.